You used me as YOLO uh, yes. in the ultimate game. Being YOLO anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ho yo he hum, I've got the key, that sort of thing. Ho yo he hum. <laughs> you want to buy a duck? <laughs> that was Port not a praise line. Or to pray. <laughs> it was just a toss off joke, and God, he paid for that for you. Oh, in fact, there's already. I will show you the homage to the duck joke. Here, oh, right? excellent! It's already excellent. in the game. Excellent. It was the first. It was the first conversation we put in the new game. Excellent! All the so, awesome stuff we did to him and making him. Uh, no. But of course, he made you wear a duck hat. Uh, no, you did. And, and, and I went back and forth as a duck. So, so basically, they had this joke, okay, and uh, and the game about, and it was just a Groucho line. A Groucho Marx, you will buy a duck. And they put it in the game, and then we started using it on it all the time. So at one tournament, they actually, Dupre's wife made Richard a set of duck feet and a duck hat to put on his helmet, and then Richard beat him anyway. But uh, so basically. But, but if I can add a little, even a little bit in front of that, in the first Ultima, there was only one person who got to say one thing, and Yolo was it. Yes. And, and Yolo's line when you went into Lord Richard's castle was, Ho yo he ma hum, I've got the key. And there was a way you could get a key from him. I can't remember if they had to kill you or talk, maybe give you something, I don't even remember. Um, but, uh, and then when I did Ultima 2, I, everybody could say something, all the characters right. said something. So I went to all my friends and I asked them, well, what do you want to say in the game? And Dupre said, well, can I answer tomorrow? Can I think about it and answer you tomorrow? And I said, sure, no problem. The next day he came back and I said, you want to buy a duck? And he said, and then, if they say yes, I'll give them a duck, and if they keep the duck, they can get an egg every day, which will supplement their food, or they can slaughter the duck and have one big meal. And I went, well, you know, that's really clever, but all I asked you is, what do you want to say? Because that's I don't have point. I don't have the ability to put the rest of that code in there behind that. Mm -hmm. That's to pray for you. And so uh, so we put him in saying, want to buy a duck? Mm -hmm. and, no, and no ability to close if the sale. If Sontre had been there, he would have second-guessed it. <laughs> and Sontre is in Ultima 2, okay. where Sontre goes, do you know where I buy a duck? Good, excellent. So, uh, and thus, you know, and it became a joke later and later. Mm -hmm. And so, and speaking of those ducks, here we are in this new game, um, nice. where this is the outdoor map, and okay. you can kind of zoom in and out. And my, my character is sort of a Paul Bunyan-esque tall right, okay. guy, kind of uh, that, and this is what you might call the travel scale of the world. Okay. Right. And so, for example, over here is a point of interest. It's a little gypsy camp. And when I get on this point of interest, I can then click this button and go down inside, and now I'm going to go get a kind of third-person over-the-shoulder view this nice. of, this, uh, this of this cluster view. And um, and now while I'm in here, you can see, oh, look, there's some wolves over here, and I can come by, and here's this woman, Susan, who, if I talk to her, she's going, oh no, the wolves are getting closer and closer, I'm in fear for my life. And so if I want to, I can come over here and uh, you know, uh, try to uh, kind of whip, whip up on these wolves yeah, here a little right. bit. And uh, you know, while these guys are attacking me, Poor wolves, but you know, uh, well, yeah, it's, it is very sad. Wolves. You know. uh, and now, if I come back over here to Susan, she will say, "Oh, thank you for saving us from those wolves. Please take my wedding ring as a reward for that for uh, that thing." Uh, now, would you take the wedding ring? No, 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 no. no you keep it. Actually, one person I demoed it to in California said, "Hell yeah, take the ring and pawn it. You're gonna make some money." Oh, no, no, see, and the game will now keep track oh, of yeah. these behaviors straight mm -hmm. and kind of build a personality profile for uh -huh. you, and the game will respond appropriately. Okay. <laughs> now, watch, nice. here, now, now watch this next little scene. I come over here to the matriarch of the place. We are a poor family. If you could spare a few coins, I'd be happy to sell you this friendly duck. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Our family specializes in taming ducks. Would you like to buy one? Oh, yes, I would. Oh, I enjoy the duck. Goodbye. So, yes, this is literally the first conversation of the game. Is Excellent. Duck. Excellent. And so uh, we then can actually come over here and we can talk to Luca, who's the patriarch of this clan. He says, thank you for buying from us. It helps us more than you know. You know, we've been, we've had such bad luck of late. You know, I feel things are going to get better now. You've been saving us from woods. Dirty ass ducks. Oh, you do. She what? sells duck eggs. Look, watch out though. Do you uh, see what's happening? Skeletons yeah. are coming down into the hills. Oh, yes they are. And so uh, now if I don't help these people, the skeletons are going to come kill off the whole family. Right. Right. So now I'm going to come over here and you know get involved in fighting some of these skeletons and here are some of my magical powers here. So right. That's and, that's and, uh, let's get rid of this archer as well here. Find right. my archer here. Oh, he's tough. All right. It's your fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. I said no. What they're gonna do. And it says, thank you for saving this. Take this uh, key to our uh, chest of supplies and help yourself to anything you need. And you can come over here and read the report for, enough. for doing a little oh, quest. Okay. The anyway, that's, uh, They're richer than they thought they said before. Uh, yeah, well, okay. Mm -hmm. That was just a, yeah, exactly, it was a prototype uh, yeah, yeah, okay. to, to demonstrate the kind of... Uh, Tools and techniques, and some of the encounters are moving, you know, as well. So uh, you know, there's another traveling group of gypsies, or 
Yeah. I can come down here and uh, here's another like town. Like fog back, so yeah, that's yeah, it's exactly that's called you know fog of war. <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, um, and here you can see there's a couple of books. Come back here. Come back this town here. You can see there's a couple of fires. You can't really see them very well. But there's a couple of fires burning here uh -huh. in this town, and that's meant to imply what's happening on the inside, uh -huh. which is oh, this dear. town is under siege. Okay, and here this yeah. woman is, I won't bother talking to her now, but her sister is trapped on the inside. And you can see these trebuchets here, uh, or the catapults really. Wait, what is yeah. there between a catapult and a trebuchet? A trebuchet is the one with the counterweight. Yeah, so there's okay. a catapult. So I think it says trebuchet, uh, but it really okay. should be catapult. And if, it's, and if this kind is an onager, uh, okay, because they kick up. And uh, if it's got the twin arms that works like a crossbow, uh, that's a Malay style. Okay, well, or we'll, have to, we'll have to, uh, yes, we'll or, have to. Or, or catapult, you know, as, uh, Oh man, you're gonna hit Take him now, man. Take him now. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah, back up and get him. There we go. And if I take out all three of these catapults, uh -huh. I can then go. The, right now, there's fires across the entryway of the of the, build, of the town. Uh, but if I were to come here and uh, you know knock yeah. out all three of these, well, you, you knock out the rope skeins. So exactly, and then yeah. I'd be able to uh, 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 come in here and, and get a chance to go inside uh -huh. and rescue uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. people. That's pretty impressive. Not yeah, you might think I was cheating. No, you're not. Of course not. You would never cheat because no, you're the master. And uh, it's not cheating if you're God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you have the power, it's yes, not exactly. cheating. Uh, and now here on the inside, you can see the town is oh, on man. fire. But uh, you know, here's a poor villager kind of running around, being attacked by some of these uh, terrible creatures that are here on the inside. Uh, Reminds me, it's always maze, of course. Oh, there's Mariah. Mariah. Oh, Mariah. Oh, Mariah. Well, that's we'll have okay. to save her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Alright, there we go. Now, oh, she says thank you. So, very good. So, I saved Maria. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, you get the idea. So right, right. Like, uh, of the general nature of reminded, that. You reminded me of the fire in your backyard when we did the haunted house. Indeed. And uh, we have these uh, these kind of portals. We call them okay. lunar rifts these times. Okay. These kind of teleporter mechanisms good, to get around good. the world. And in Save this case, you can see through that through that ball, you can see there the cameras in some other place in the world. Cool. And based upon the phases of the moon, which I can see up there, uh, that will tell me which of these oh, eight pillars cool. is that's activated, nice. and it takes me to a different city so that's based nice. upon uh, which of the phase of the moon. Right. Is. Did you see that the thing in the news this morning about the Viking uh, sunstones? No. So, well, it turns out the Vikings had something. There's something that shows up in the old story as a sunstone. Hmm. And it allows you to find the position of the sun when it's cloudy and actually after sundown for a while. And it's actually a piece of calcite that comes out of Iceland. And it's got a sort of a, an optical effect so that uh, if you line the yeah, stone yeah. up uh, with the sun properly, you get the correct optical right, effect. Exactly. You get focus. Okay. Right, right. Well, it and turns so you, out, so it's certain, certain way that the light will come through the clouds anyway. And yeah. So it's, it's lining up. It's it creating turns that. out it's mm. accurate within one degree of mm. arc. Mm. Wow. Mm. Which for ancient navigation. Mighty good. So you need sunstones. <laughs> uh, I've never heard of a sunstone, but I will. Uh, yeah, but yeah, best, I'll, I'll base, uh, I, I ran into a story on, on BBC mm. News. So it's a quite news BBC news story. Yeah. Like that. Because this is it, this struck me as yeah, very much phases of the moon, mm -hmm. astronomical stuff. You're not an astronaut, are you? No. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. 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 Occasionally. Now and again. Um, and now oh, uh, nice. you see us. We're going up uh, here near the mountains, and you saw the uh, glimpse. Yeah. 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 Well, there's a volcano, and the dragon kind of hangs out near this volcano. So we'll see if we see him. Gets power. And we're also in introducing a little bit of technology. We're, okay, we're, sure. we're avoiding gunpowder, okay, yeah. but we're bringing in, uh, you know, uh, water mills and rivers, right? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, windmills to draw mm -hmm. little wind power, even a little geothermal steam, and uh, and we're running little generators and having a little bit of electrical power. Oh, there's mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Dragon. Sure. And so that's creating like a uh, forbidden planet style, uh, you know, protected field around the places. So therefore, that siege won't happen to your right. town, right? Exactly. Exactly. If you live there. Good idea. <laughs> but it, but only those major cities that have to be near power. your life expectancy in that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No one knows. Yeah. The expectancy is only 30 or 40 years anyway. So. That's true. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Who would know? Who would know? In fact. Um, but in any case, that's really sort of the game. That's, uh, it looks you, like you fun. Get the, you get the gist of it. This looks like, looks like a great fun. Oh, look what this build has in it, Chris. What? What's, oh, no. what's this? It's, what's it's, here, right here? It's a crack of Is that fun. the ground? That's the ground. No water. Well, you installed the wrong version. No, I installed the correct version. <laughs>
it's, it's, it's the fiery cracks of doom in front of Richard's house. But I would like to welcome you, Master Yolo. Oh, Rump, I am pleased to be welcomed. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I just got done showing you a little bit of our new game, uh, Shroud of the Avatar. Shroud of the Avatar. Did oh. you like it? I like it. I think it's beautiful. And uh, uh, nice graphics, things to do, bad guys to whack. All right, <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> And, uh, and, and for those of you, I, I know all of you know Master Yolo from our time, all of our times together, yours and ours, uh, in the Ultima series. Uh, but for those of you who are a bit younger than us uh, and don't remember all the way back to the very beginning, the very beginning, long, well, long ago, long. almost 40 years ago, kind of yeah, long ago, uh, Yolo was actually the first character in any Ultima to have anything to say. And do you remember what it was? Hoi oh, he home, I have the key. Exactly, exactly. And so he held the, uh, the special key that players could get to, I don't even remember where it went, I'm sure a bunch of you actually do uh, remember what that key was used for. But, uh, and then um, uh, starting with Ultimate 2, all the other companions of the Avatar began to show up and our good friends here in Austin, uh, who I hope to bring here also. Uh, but, but, uh, but for those of you who don't know, I mean a lot of people didn't realize, I mean some people I think had heard that the Ultimate Companions were real people, but I'm not sure people realized how precisely, precisely they were modeled in the, the game. Yeah. And so uh, your job in the game uh, was often to make crossbows. And what do you do in the real world? I make crossbows. Uh, perfect. I make medieval crossbows. And, uh, please tell me about this one right here. Uh, this, is, um, this is a fairly close copy of a crossbow that's in the Danish National Museum in Copenhagen. I, so I call it the Danish bow. It's actually probably South German, dated about 1460 or 1470. Hmm. And this would be a pretty nice quality bow, a good quality military bow, or a low-end gentleman's bow. And, and uh, in, in, in period times, if, if I might ask, yeah. uh, you know, I, I can't imagine a high-quality piece of weaponry, which is really a tool as, really? Uh, as much as anything else, compared to like a month's income or something, what would a, oh, what would a bow cost this bow uh, here? a person, you know, a lay person in the world? Uh, Could a lay person even buy a bow? Uh, well, in many places, a lay person wouldn't be allowed. In England, in particular, if you did not have a certain level of public of income, of so many pounds a year, if you didn't own real property, you couldn't own a crossbow. Wow. So a lot of the people in England, for instance, who had crossbows, the crossbow theoretically belonged to the Lord of the, the Manor, yeah. but in fact, in many cases, they were hiring professional bowmen from, say, Italy, where you could. Uh, the guy comes in, and theoretically, the landlord owns the bow while the guy's serving there, and then he takes it home with him. And mm -hmm. so, so, but basically, this would be <sighs> probably the cost of a small car. Oh, wow, okay. You know, so wow. basically, it's, it's a professional bowman, a professional soldier, you know, when you get down to it, the cost of a good quality sword, yeah. by today's standards, would probably be like a small car, fifteen, yeah. twenty thousand yeah. dollars, and so basically to get something of that quality, and so if you were if you were not well dressed and you were seen walking around with a sword, the local authorities are immediately going to start looking at you very closely. Yeah. So this would be an expensive tool if you basically city militias had crossbows in the armory, mm -hmm. and if you were part of the city militia, the bows were kept there, and you went and you mm -hmm. collected your bow on Sunday afternoon, and you went out and shot for a while. And brought it back. In England, peasant people actually owned longbows, but they were very buggy about people owning hunting points within, right near the, um, near the, near the, the confines of the king's Hunting lodges, okay. Ah, yes. And so these points, if you were a, a yeoman farmer and you, of course, you practice your bow with every holy day, and which <laughs> about twice a week, uh, but if you had heads like that hidden up in the uh, thatch of your house, the uh, they would take you away. Ah, really? You'd get a beating for that. Ah, you'd probably, probably burn your house. Well, so basically, because this says King's Deer. Mm, yeah, yep. I see. Uh, these I see. points. Those are military points. That's for shooting at armor. Yep. I yep. don't know those. Yeah. But they were particularly worried about people with hunting type points because you know what those are for. Those are for shooting at the target. You shoot the target, the target comes apart. Yeah. Those are for shooting the king's deer. Exactly. And the king owns all the deer. And well, the, uh, he owns the deer, or the local lord whose terrain it is owns the deer. But of course, either way, it's not yours. It's not your deer. Right. And so. And, 
And also uh, uh, this insignia on the butt of this, the staff. Uh, you all made me. Exactly. All so my these have the eye. Absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, uh, obviously, uh, we really hope to get you as an individual, you, David Watson, yes. at the very least, uh, to come join us in the new world. Absolutely. Perfect. And uh, and even though uh, you know, on the Kickstarter campaign we're doing, we have people making contributions to directly to the game. Right. Uh -huh. But. Post the formal Kickstarter, we're going to put up another what I'll call store, right. where we let people kind of buy cloth maps and some of the other trinkets Excellent. that we do. Excellent. And I don't know about you, but if you'd be willing, I think that we should bring some YOLOs bows uh, no you know, to, to market uh, right on board and let our players uh, uh, participate with you I think uh, right. and play along with us in the new world. Happy to do it. I'll, I'll, make, I'll put my apprentice to work immediately. Yeah. Hello, I am David Watson, known to many of you in the gaming world as YOLO the original YOLO from the Ultimate Games. I have just seen Richard Garriott's new game, Shroud of the Avatar. It's beautiful, it has lovely graphics, and it, it promises to show us all a great adventure. So adventure with me, come along, we'll go into the netherworld or the other world, and we'll have some fun slaying monsters. And maybe, maybe we'll learn a few things along the way. Wow. So this is the loot that that uh, Joe Garrity gave me. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Turns yeah, yeah. out, Oops, when Joe was a kid, his friends all called him Vol. Called him what? Vol. Vol. Vulgarity. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a, he gave me this loot for for coming to his wedding. Perfect. And of course, just. It's almost a guitar tuning, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's very good. Guitar plus a string or two. It's, um, take a guitar, add another string one fifth up. Hmm. And so it's relatively E A D G B E A. Right. But the thing is, if you had a six course loot, it would be A D G B E A. Mm, yeah, yeah. And so the guitar adds on the bottom. This is a seven. Actually, this was built as an eight. Hmm. But I always play as a seven, and it has only single strings <coughs> because I pirated the double strings for the big loot. <laughs> and because the big loot, the neck is much, much broader, and I've never been really comfortable on this one with the strings are just too close to get, too close to like a mandolin. Yeah, yeah. And so. Perfect. What a beautiful piece, <laughs> indeed. So, you know, I, I, that's, that sounds a little reminiscent to me uh, from some time in the past. But uh, I, I must say that, it, 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 you know, I, I'm, not only for me, but I'm sure for all of the players of the games uh, that we created, oh, those 30 plus years ago, uh, I know they all have fond memories of that. But, uh, but again, please introduce yourselves to our on camera friends and uh, tell them what you've just been through. And, I'll, I'll and tell you this bit first. Wait. This is one take. That tune came from my honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Gwenno and I had just come back from honeymoon and we had bought a set of new lute strings at the early music shop in London, just off on Chiltern Street, just off Baker Street. And we came home and I was putting the strings on the instrument. And I started... came out. And so it was this beautiful little haunting tune that just came out of the loop with the new strings. And Gwenno said, that needs words. Mm -hmm. And so she wrote the poem. Which is also with masterful. Some, with, some, with some influence from it. Mostly she wrote the poem. And we put it together and then went out and sang it at SCA things. And that's yeah. where it actually came from. You may know me as Yolo, your companion from many, many journeys through the Ultima Worlds. Now, after 15 years of waiting, we have an opportunity to go once more into the breach and have thrilling adventures in a world of Lord British's creation. We'll fight monsters, we'll discover wonderful things, treasures, and maybe learn a few things along the way. I like that, I'm proud of that. Perfect.
Is this a new piece? Hardly. What is this piece? This is Packington's Pound in 16th century. Ah, very good. Yeah, let's hear, let's hear what you are. Is there. different words. Mm -hmm. One is uh, one version of it is about uh, the apprentice who is cuckolding his master with the young wife. And another was about Mr. Packington who was claimed he could swim the Thames at, at London Bridge, which is very dangerous. Yeah, right? yeah I would imagine. Uh, well, particularly because the bridge impeded water flow so badly that it particularly at tide turn there was a tidal bore going through the bridge. Right. And so there were actually specialist boatmen who operated above and below the bridge. Most boatmen, I mean, boatmen operated one place or the other. Packington swore he could do this. He could swim the thing right there. He was hot. He told all his friends. He wagered a lot of money on it. And Queen Elizabeth heard about it and said, no. You swim, you hope you won't come out the other side because I will put you in the, in the tower. And so he had to back out and he had to pay off the people. He swore he could do this to them. It was very embarrassed. And so apparently there was one set of verses which is lampooning Packington for made, having made a fool of himself and being brought down by the Queen. Yeah, oh, that's hilarious. But uh, what else we need to Well, you know, that's, a, that's probably something that, um, you know, if you're willing, as we get this game a little further underway, we might come back to you uh, both in search of, of uh, traditional wonders and perhaps, uh, you know, who knows? You might have some other originals tucked away or uh, be convinced to uh, do a little work. I think we can think of some things to do. I think so. And um, I'm looking forward to it. This, is, this has the germ of, of greatness. I think it could be a lot of fun. I'm particularly impressed with a little touch of, steam, of steampunk. Uh, it's something one doesn't always see in fantasies. I mean, there are some lovely fantasy games out there who can consistently to align, but this adds an extra dimension. I mean, when you're dealing with things like portals, if you portal to another world, who knows what they'll have? And so I think the options here of, of comparing to, yes, we know of some very nice games who keep you in a fantasy world, but this gives you the option of going anywhere your imagination could take you. And your imagination, by and large, has taken us pretty good places. I'd be willing to kick in a few ideas. Excellent. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. Well, you've given us plenty of your wonderful time. Shooting We're honored by your presence and uh, deeply appreciative. Your apprentice, you may put the loot back where it belongs.